If you're from New Zealand, then you've heard of the phrase togs, togs, undies. Thankfully, in most cases, you're not looking at togs or undies in the workplace, but did you know you might be looking at maybe shorts? Well, I came across a HRD New Zealand article last week, and I thought I'd do an impromptu episode where we have a bit of a discussion around wearing, believe it or not, shorts in the workplace. And it's not for the jobs that you think. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam and thank you so much for tuning in. So, (laughs) as the title says, what happens if you want to wear jumpers, sweaters, shorts, anything, everything in between in the workplace? What happens in that scenario? And I'd normally post fortnightly, but I thought this is just too interesting and I really want it while it's front of mind to have a chat about it. HRD New Zealand did an article and it was around frog recruitment going in and surveying 800 employees and finding out if they would wear shorts in the workplace or what they would wear. And 34% of them said yes, anytime, that they would be wearing shorts. Now, look, I know what you might say. You're probably sitting there going, Sanam, how naive of you. There are actually jobs out there that wear shorts. I get that. And please do not come for me. I absolutely get that. Well, my friends, I am not that naive because my first thought was just that. Who did they actually survey? They surveyed corporate office workers. You've heard that right. I can't remember ever wearing anything like that in a corporate workplace environment. But yes, 34% of people said yes, that they would wear shorts to the workplace anytime. And 31% were actually reserved about it, but found it acceptable. They said no. That's absolutely fine. We've got a majority of people here saying that you can wear shorts to the workplace. And then the remainder of them, the remainder being the 34%, said that wearing shorts at work was unprofessional. So we've got quite a small number of people saying that shorts were unprofessional. Personally, for me, I've never worn shorts with the intention of wearing them to work. I have worked out during the middle of the day and they are really comfortable so I have thought do I really want to change back but I did change back because the last thing that I want is any reporting partner in a law firm looking at me in gym shorts (laughs) that's just not an image I could get out of their heads and (laughs) I don't want them to see that site it is an interesting one and when I did see the article I thought about and I thought How many corporate environments are actually doing this? And it would be great to hear if this is something, an initiative that that some corporates are are doing. But we always know that corporate, the corporate world has always been there. We've seen the ads, we've seen the TV shows, the movies, the business suits. But there has always been a pushing of the boundaries in corporate. You'll always have those people that will try to push and If things didn't get pushed, then they wouldn't be the way that they are now. I mean, now it's very normal to wear those tennis shoes into a a corporate setting and to wear those with really cool trousers. And now you've got a really trendy looking outfit that's ready for TikTok. (laughs) But I remember when I first got into private practice and I worked in a a firm that was actually quite older. And one of the the ladies that I worked with, such a lovely lady, Christine, she had been there for, for a very, very long time. And she said that in the 80s, she remembered a legal secretary, believe it or not, came in wearing harem pants. Does everybody remember harem pants? <laughs> Those genie pants? They made their way back, I remember, in the 2000s. They have slowly left the building now and they are probably only acceptable in certain scenarios. <laughs> but the harem pants in the workplace, as you can imagine, she was immediately sent home <laughs> and told to change by one of the reporting partners. And nowadays... We are seeing this this shift, not necessarily wearing harem pants and or genie pants in the workplace, but we are seeing a shift because a lot of employees are coming back from working from home. And funnily enough, when people are working from home, they are not dressed, ready to attack the corporate world. And this article, it linked to another article about what people were doing during 
remote working. And 73% of people in, in that survey that was con- conducted in a separate article said that they avoided using their video camera because they weren't dressed or groomed properly. That would never happen when people were coming to the workplace, uh, especially in my experience, coming to, to a corporate environment. That would absolutely never happen. And nowadays, the climate is, is a lot different. And this is what led me to thinking, okay, shorts in the workplace is one thing, but now we need to go a little bit beyond that and go, are we setting up policies correctly? Now with the climate that we're in, with the way that fashion is changing, with the way that remote working has impacted, uh, COVID-19 has impacted uh, people and the way that they dress, we really need to make sure that we set out very clear policies, obviously not discriminatory policies, but very clear policies about appropriate workplace attire. This particular article, when I originally read it about wearing shorts in the workplace, did talk about policies that say, more casual attire is allowed maybe on particular circumstances. So maybe when you're not client facing, then those days you can go ahead and and just wear whatever you like that's a bit more casual, maybe jeans, tennis shoes, uh, maybe a t-shirt. But I know from personal experience that it's really hard to tee up your day. It's not that easy. Uh, When I was working in a corporate environment, you would get last minute meetings all the time. And I found myself, if and if I wanted to go in and have a comfortable day, and and when I say comfortable, it wasn't something where I was coming in in, you know, (laughs) shorts and jandals. But in those situations, I still found myself not being able to predict my day. So I would have a change of clothes, shoes, everything. And I noticed all of the lawyers did that. It, It makes me think that you really have to think about what these policies are going to be like and how they're going to impact people and the practicality of these policies too. And that's where I would say the whole client-facing option doesn't work all the time. It's great to have, but the last thing that you want is for a, an employee to be brought in. Maybe they're in their gym attire and then all of a sudden they get pulled into a random meeting. The last thing that you want is to be reprimanding somebody when they had no idea that that meeting was going to happen. So... It is really critical to be very clear in your company policy. If there are no shorts that should be worn in the workplace, then say that they can, cannot wear shorts. But sometimes you can't factor it all. And you can provide a whole list of examples, but sometimes you just cannot factor it all. And I remember about five years ago dealing with a case where this employee just would not let up because... The employer's policy explicitly stated that you cannot wear leggings in the workplace. And an employee decided to come into work wearing, (sighs) you ready for this? Jeggings. Yes, jeggings. Jeggings are still around. They're not (laughs) non-existence like harem pants. But yes, jeggings. And the employee would not let up because jeggings were not explicitly mentioned in the policy. So that's where where I would say keep the policy broad, but also keep it narrowed down to particular examples. And we were able to argue in that case that jeggings would be considered as more casual attire and the particular office environment required more corporate attire. Make sure that all employees, and I really want to reiterate this point, really hone in on this point, make sure that all employees have read and acknowledged this particular policy. You cannot look at doing any disciplinaries or anything of that sort unless you have made sure that an employee has read, has understood and completely gets that this is the policy that's in place. So please do that and also hold everyone to the same standard. I cannot tell you the amount of times that it an employer will show all of their cards very quickly and put all of it on the table for all of the employees to see or a particular employee to see because they are gunning for one employee. Do not do that. Hold everyone up to the same standard and make sure that it's unacceptable for everyone. And a lot of times employers will let things like sit and fester and build and build and build. And then when it comes to a head, they'll be so frustrated and all they want to do is, oh, I just want to get them out. I just want to terminate them. It it doesn't work that way. It has to be something where you see the issue and you address the issue. 
It is better to be proactive. It is better to make sure that you deal with something early on before it bubbles and boils until it's boiling over. And then you're just in a state of frustration. And one particular situation, we had a practice manager that would get very frustrated when a law clerk would come in because how do I put, how do I put this correctly? She would wear a dress that was maybe more than a smidge too short. It was, it was short. (laughs) If I could emphasize and italicize the word short, it, it was that, but it was never addressed in any capacity with her. It was just spoken about in the workplace, which is also a very, very poor form for a manager to do. But senior management was just always left frustrated. They would always be annoyed and they wanted to be able to handle it and deal with it. But how would you handle a situation like this? What would you actually do? For me, if I was dealing with it and I was a manager, I would send out an email to everybody just reminding them of the dress policy or the workplace attire policy, what's appropriate. Now, everybody gets a reminder. It's not so that you can reprimand particular employees. It's more so um, just a reminder about what we have in place in terms of a policy. Also, you could go off the back of something that might be happening in the workplace. So let's say that it's a busier period as you're coming up closer to to Christmas time and you're trying to wrap things up and there's more client facing meetings and you have a policy that mentions particular attire when you're in the workplace, more clients coming through, then use that. Go off the back of that and say, just letting you know with more client meetings coming up, this is just something to be mindful of. Now, it's more of a memo. It gets sent out. If this particular employee that you're dealing with just does not get that memo, then that's when I would have a more informal chat with them and set the expectations. But just keep in mind that you would need to treat everyone the same. Do not single out a particular employee if three other people are doing the same thing. So it's an interesting one. It started off with shorts. It ended up with short dresses. (laughs) And I threw in a bit of harem pants and jeggings, <laughs> but you, you get the point. It, it Even though this is a bit of an impromptu episode and it's a bit of a funny one, the ultimate point here is that you need to make sure that you have proper policies to hold people accountable. And now that we're moving into an environment where we are coming back into the office, a lot of workplaces, corporate workplaces are asking people to come back then it is really important that you set this expectation of what workplace or appropriate workplace attire looks like. Thank you for listening. And I hope you like this episode. Please let me know if, you're, if you've been dealing with anything like this in the workplace. I'll, I'll put up a LinkedIn post about this as well. So please feel free to comment, reach out and share, like, follow. And always, as always, have a lovely day, night, evening, morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm-hmm.